Dampe Seda, and that's a very special tool. Clamps like this, little brothers or sisters. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Ask All Of, the violin maker. So today I've got a little bit of a special episode. Um, as you could see, I was just working on this violin and uh, I, I'm actually working on the top, on the nut of the violin. And uh, I'm just, just shaping it and everything. And I realized us violin makers use an awful lot of specialized tools. So today I'm just going to talk you through my tools. The main tool that a violin maker uses is his knife. So that's a carving knife, which uh, which looks like this. Um, I use it to carve all sorts of things. So from working on bridges um, to Just cutting very fine slithers of bridges to doing all sorts of work on different instruments. Now, this knife actually has a couple of little brothers or sisters. Um, this is the one I mostly use for cutting bridges, and this is a new one I got recently. Got it's a Japanese knife. It's got a longer tip. Quite amazing. Now, the next tool that I use very often is my trusty file, which uh, which looks like this. So the file, again, it removes timber. Um, so this side is actually a rasp, so it's quite rough, and the other side's a file. So the rasp removes timber quite quickly, and then uh, there, and then the file does it more slowly. The next tool I use, actually one of my most important tools that I use, is my little measuring tape, uh, which looks a little bit like this. It's hugely important because measurements are just so important in violin making. You've got to make sure that the string heights are right, you need to make sure that the the strings have the right width apart, and to do that I actually use this I can use this to very evenly make divisions and have very clear markings, uh, you know, just by having a little pinprick somewhere and you can just see it very clearly. You can see it's actually a very pointy tool. Um, okay, so the next tools are some other, some more of my cutting tools. So uh, the most used cutting tools are the chisels. This is a beautiful Japanese chisel that I recently got. Um, and uh, the other one would be the gouge. So the chisel can take timber off. Um, I'll just show you. Um, so you can, you can actually cut bits of timber quite easily. What's important about all my cutting tools is that I actually sharpen them and I sharpen them in a way that you can actually shave with them. That's how sharp they are. I don't usually shave my face with my sharpening, uh, with my um, my chisels, uh, but I test them on my arm. So I've actually got this naked bit on my arm where there's no hair because I keep shaving it off, testing my tools. And uh, um, I also have sharpening stones, which I use to sharpen uh, the, the chisels. The other tool that I use is the gouge. I use that quite a lot less. Um, this is again, it's a beautiful Japanese gouge that uh, that um, I recently got. And, uh, and I use that to just hollow little bits out in the timber. So say you've got a piece of timber here. Um, I can basically create a beautiful hollow cut a little bit like that. And that comes in very handy when you're actually making the edges um, of a violin and the scroll and other tools. Um, up here, I actually have a lot of my, um, my other chisels and gouges. 
Now the next tools that I use are also cutting tools and they are planes. So this is my probably one of my most used planes. It's a Lee Nielsen plane. I absolutely love it. And uh, it's again very important to keep it super sharp. It's not at its sharpest right now, but you can see uh, what it does. So I can basically straighten and plane an entire area. You can see that area is smooth. It just has this branch here, so it's got a little bit of a, it, it tears a little bit where the branch is. But for example, here's a rough, um, there's a rough surface here. And uh, basically, with a bit of planing, there we go. It is now a super smooth surface. It is so smooth, in fact. That it's slightly shiny and it's reflecting the light pretty amazing okay but planes don't just have to be this big i've actually got smaller planes that are used to shape the top plate so there's this plane here which is slightly smaller i don't use that one so much i use it for shaping the outside of the top plate a little bit and the back uh then it you know, you have some smaller planes that are about this big. Um, then I've got smaller planes that are about this. But my favorite, as in for a curiosity, my favorite plane is actually this one here. Okay, that's Mini-Me, the tiny plane. So this is a smallish plane. This, my friends, is a tiny plane. Um, yeah, so uh, I just use that just to neaten up just around the edges. It um, It's amazing. It just does this very tiny little... Actually, you can... Can you see here? I'll just point here. Can you see here? There's actually a, a, a small groove. I'm just trying to get the lighting right. You can see a small groove just here. So that's... Oh, yeah, there you go. So it's the one, this one here was done with a blunt plane and you can see how horribly it's not cutting very nicely at all. So I have to sharpen that one. Okay, so some other tools that I use as a violin maker, obviously use saws. And I have these amazing Japanese saws that I like to use. Um, one of them is um, this one here. And uh, that's one of the finer saws. It's super, super sharp. And the other saw I use is this one here. And it, it cuts really nicely as well. Um, so I can use it to... I shouldn't do this in the air. Just just don't, don't do what I'm doing. It's just because I've done this for so many years. But it, it actually makes a super neat cut. Quite a neat cut, actually. Uh, so other um, saws I use are this coping saw that allows me um, that allows me to cut um, you know to cut shapes like the around the outside of the plates of the instrument. I do have my trusty bandsaw in the back here. It's a Ryobi. I don't actually recommend it that much. It's not the neatest saw. I'm probably going to get a better one very soon. The other tools I use are my scrapers. So this is a scraper. It is also a cutting tool. Scraper is actually a bit of a, you know, it's not really the right term because um, it's actually very sharp at the edge. And so you can like very gently remove little bits of timber and smooth areas out. Because I have so many tools that I kind of use as a violin maker. Um, another one is my... Um, my gauge, my thickness in gauge. So that allows me to see how thick a top plate or a back of an instrument is. I also use the vernier caliper. This is my cute little vernier caliper. Uh, that way I can measure the uh, thickness of things like bridges. Then I have the sound post setter and that's a very special tool. That's my sound post setter. And uh, this is my violin sound post set. I also have one for cellos. And that allows me to firstly use this uh, this tip uh, to put a sound post in. So here's a sound post. It's a viola sound post. And so you can actually first spike it. 
and that allows you to put it inside the instrument. This is a viola sound post and this is a violin. But uh, you can kind of see how, you know, I'd be able to put it in and then insert it in the instrument. So it's quite clever. So if you've ever wondered how the sound post gets in there, they can use this side of the sound post setter to actually adjust the sound post and move it from side to side. And then I'll carefully measure exactly where the sound post is in respect to the bridge, which is hugely important. So these are some of my tools. Um, uh, what's important for the tools is that they are super sharp and always well looked after because um, with sharp tools you can do some really accurate work. The other thing that's important is that you have the right tools. And then finally, the most important things is learning how to use those tools. So I've been doing this for 34 years. Uh, I spent a lot of time learning how to use the tools. Early on, I, um, I actually really struggled, like everyone would, doing something new. It was a real hassle, and I was getting things wrong. I was cutting myself. First day, I actually cut myself, I think it was four or five times. It was horrible. I was, like, covered in Band-Aids. Um, and then the first week, I think, the week after that, I think I cut myself about seven times. And then the month after that, about seven times. But then the year after that, I cut myself seven times. So so I'm. it's a steep learning curve. You learn very quickly, but it's all about controlling the tools really well. Now, the final tools that I use, and I have lots of them, are clamps. Uh, you know, from little clamps like this one, or I have even tinier clamps to um, to large clamps like um, you know like clamps like this special crack clamps that allow me to to glue a crack on an instrument um, then I have ultra special crack clamps that actually go three ways. These are really cool. And then I have got the closing clamps for instruments. Uh, you know, this is a cello closing clamp here. That uh, that when I glue a cello shut, that's um, what I use. And uh, I have the violin closing clamps. I have these ones. I actually made these myself, which is really cool. Um, apart from that, there are lots of other little tools I use, from hammers to brushes for retouching to um, to little spatulas for spreading um, um, filling varnish to you know huge gouges for uh, when I'm making new instruments uh, to Remus, which is to uh, to do the peg holes. Um, I could literally do a two-hour video explaining all the tools. But that's it for now. Just remember, violin makers use lots of specialized tools. Uh, it takes a long time to learn how to use them. Ooh, one of my more important tools is my little... Um, my little magnifying glass for exact jobs. Um, but yes, it takes us a long time to, to learn to use them, uh, but they are super important. So to do good quality work, you need good quality tools. If you like the video, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell next to it so you get notified every time I do a new video, and I'll see you next time.